This is firms efficiency markets and coordination and kind of sick so then might have to pause a little at times but uh, most of this chapter is going to be definitions so you could choose to skip it if you want but it's always nice to know your definitions because at any uh, job interview if you know your definitions that'll probably really impress your interviewer. But so let's start with the definition. So a firm, as you know, is an institution that hires factors of production and organizes them to produce and sell goods, so goods and services. So for example, McDonald's, uh, that would be a firm because they hire people, they organize them in such a way that they produce and sell burgers and fries and all that good stuff efficiently. And the goal of any firm is to maximize profit. If the firm fails to maximize its profit, then the firm uh, is either eliminated or they are bought out by other firms seeking to maximize profit. Now, there's a little difference between economic profit and uh, accounting profit. Now, accountants measure a firm's profit to ensure that the firm pays the right tax and to show to investors how their funds are being used. So the profit here is calculated by total revenue minus total cost. And the accountants use IRS rules based on standards established by the Financial uh, Accounting Standards Board to calculate a firm's depreciation cost. Now, that last part I just said, you don't really need to remember it because we're studying economics here, not accounting. Now, economic profit. This is really something you need to remember. Now, economists, they measure a firm's profit to enable them to predict the firm's decisions. And the goal of these decisions is to maximize the economic profit. So, uh, what the economists do, their work is used by... Uh, used by the executives of a company per se to make decisions on how to maximize their profit and economic profit is total revenue minus total cost with total cost measured as the opportunity cost of production now you may ask that uh, you may ask what the opportunity cost of production is and I'm gonna explain that to you well basically the opportunity cost of production is equal to the value of the best alternative uh, the resources could be used for in production so say that you are say with our McDonald's examples uh, we had to invest some money to in, enable to make all those burgers and uh, in, in, enable enable well, da, da, da. in order to make all those burgers we need to invest money to buy the buns the patties and etc well that money could be used for another uh, purpose for example if McDonald's starts uh, think that they could they can make a break for it and do well in in fashion and they could be used to uh, for some fashion purposes like t-shirts I don't know so yeah so the opportunity cost of production is really the sum of the following the cost of the resources bought plus the cost of the resources owned plus the cost of the resources supplied by the owner now resources bought in the market this is pretty much the amount uh, spent by a firm on resources bought in the market. This is an opportunity cost of production because the firm could have bought different resources to produce some other good or service. So just like that example I just said, uh, the, the money spent on the buns and patties could have been used for another purpose like for t-shirts or cotton. Now the resources owned by a firm, the second factor in our opportunity cost of production, if the firm owns capital and uses it to produce its output, then the firm incurs an opportunity cost. They incur this opportunity cost because uh, it could have sold the capital and rented the capital to another firm. So in this case, when the firm uses its own resources, uses its own money to, to do something, then the firm is really, they're implicitly renting the capital from itself. Now the firm's opportunity cost of using the capital it owns is called the implicit rate of capital. So the implicit rate of capital is uh, it's when the firm uh, firm's opportunity cost is uh, it's the firm's opportunity cost of using its own capital. And the implicit rate of capital is made up of economic depreciation and interest foregone. Now economic depreciation is the change in the market value of capital over time and the interest we're gone is the return on the funds uh, used to acquire the capital because you could have rented out your capital so that capital could have 
you could have rented it out, and when you rent things out, you could have collected interest on that capital. But since you're using it it's yourself, you are foregoing the interest that you could have collected. And economic depreciation is, yeah, any kind of uh, capital, for example, our homes, our machines, that kind of capital, they depreciate because as we use it over time, they, they break. So when they break, they, the market value of that capital changes and that is economic depreciation. And that is something that you'll probably learn in accounting as well. But other than that, I think this is a good place to stop. Uh, economic depreciation and, and if an interest were gone and implicit rental rate of capital, I don't think that any professor would actually make up a question based on these. So you could really keep it on the on the edges of your mind, but just remember that I did go through this go through with you guys on this subject. Uh, other than that, please rate and comment and subscribe, and I'll.